Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. So, I've been using GNOME 3 for a little bit now, and I wanted to give some first impressions on how I feel about it. Let's start. The desktop metaphor. GNOME 3 has been a radical departure from the traditional desktop, windows and taskbar paradigm of most other desktop environments. Instead of using dual panels like GNOME 2 did in its day, or a single panel on the bottom like KDE or Windows, or even a top bar plus dock combo like Mac OS X, GNOME 3 only displays a top bar with an activities button, the current application's name, which reveals a pop-up menu once clicked, the clock, and the notification area. The rest of the desktop is all wallpaper. This can be a bit weird when starting up with it, but once you click on the Activities button in the top panel, you get a complete overview of your windows, shortcuts, a way to start applications, and your virtual desktops. The Activities view is GNOME 3's way of presenting a complete desktop interface when you need it, and putting it out of the way when you're working on something. If clicking is not your thing, you can press the Super key to make it appear. Activities are a good concept on paper, but it departs from the standard usual desktop metaphors, and it can take a little bit of time to get used to. Managing applications. Since you don't have a regular menu or dock, how do you start apps? Well, through the activities, of course. Just click the activities button or hit the super key. You can either start typing the name of the app you need, open it from the favorite dock that appears on the left side of the screen, or open the all apps view by clicking the nine squares icon. You can also search for folders, files, websites, and even applications. The search is pretty powerful and returns results quickly. Open applications will be displayed in the dock where you can add them as favorites for quicker access. Opening apps through typing is great and works fine, just like on other desktops. I found the all apps view a bit cumbersome since it requires one more click to get to your apps list and they are not sorted by category, neither does it support app folders compared to a traditional menu, but it works well enough. The dock, once you've configured the favorites you need, is practical. My main gripe with this setup is that you don't have a quick launcher that is always visible. It feels more natural to me to just move my mouse and click on the apps icon I need than to open a separate view and open my favorite app. I often just type the name of the app I need, but no makes me relearn my just click on the icon behavior and it's taking a bit of time to adjust. Obviously, extensions can solve this, but I'll focus on them on another video. Windows GNOME 3 still uses the paradigm of good old application Windows. Each app opens in a window with a header bar integrating title bar and toolbar, on regular GNOME apps anyway. You still get your close button on the right side of the window, but there are no minimize or maximize buttons. You can maximize a window by dragging it to the top or tile it left or right with a nice preview of the space the window will occupy. You can also press super while dragging from anywhere on the window to move it. To switch windows, you can use Alt-Tab or go to the Activities view and see them spread out like Exposé on Mac OS X. On default GNOME applications, you get a menu for each window, but that menu is displayed up top in the top panel. This seems counterintuitive to me. No GNOME app has any standard menu bar, so the top panel does not host a global menu bar, just the current applications menu, which can contain options such as New Windows, Preferences or the About window, or a lot more stuff, depending on the app. Since you never use the top panel to interact with an app, it seems weird to put that menu there, except maybe with a maximized app. These applications menus seem to be gradually phased out of future GNOME versions to be integrated directly into the applications window, which is a good thing, I think. Virtual desktops. GNOME implements the virtual desktops in a very natural way. You get to them from the Activities view or with Super Plus Page Up or Super Plus Page Down keyboard shortcut. By default you have two, and a new one is created automatically as soon as you have at least one window in each virtual desktop. An empty virtual desktop will automatically be deleted. You can simply drag a window from the Activities overview to place it on the selected virtual desktop. Switching applications will automatically bring you to the desktop where you dragged it, and customization ends here, with no possibility to change wallpapers on virtual desktops, which is a shame, since I feel it helps making sense of where you are. Desktop customization. There isn't much to change here. You can switch the desktop wallpaper by right-clicking on the desktop, and that's about it. You can also tweak which results will appear while searching in the activities view and adjust notifications preferences, but that's all. GNOME 3, by default, does not offer any theme options. 
you are stuck with the default look, black top bar, Advaita theme and icons. I must say the black bar and the gnome shell theme look pretty good, and Advaita is not bad to look at, except for all the padding. Title bars and buttons are pretty huge. The icons, on the other hand, look very muted to me, lacking color, and generally feeling pretty dated. Gnome is working on a redesign of most of these icons, which should improve things a bit, but the color palette still seems to be quite toned down, and I tend to prefer more vibrant, vivid colors. To change themes and icons, you'll have to install Gnome Tweaks, but we'll talk about this in another video, since theming is a problematic subject these days with Gnome, and can cause some issues. I've already touched on the Gnome theming subject, so you can just click on the video up top if you want to learn more about this. Gnome 3's metaphor is a bit unsettling by default. The way to get to your open or minimized windows is not immediately obvious, and the use of a full screen activities view serving as an overview to manage your apps, desktops and windows was not familiar to me, so it took a bit of time to get to grips with it and relearn the desktop, something I didn't have to do with KDE or Elementary OS for example, which use more traditional desktop metaphors. Gnome presents you with two very different spaces. Instead of combining your working area where you use your applications with the desktop panels, bars and launchers, they divided these aspects on two screens. The first one is your desktop, with the top panel acting as a gateway for the rest of the system. The second view is your activities, designed to help you open apps, search for files, manage windows and virtual desktops. So you've got one space to do your work and one space to interact with your system. This metaphor is very well suited to monotasking. Open one app full screen on each virtual desktop and the shell will work perfectly for you. Multitaskers, on the other hand, better learn the keyboard shortcuts and get used to alt-tabbing quite a bit or pressing the super key often to switch applications. My final first impression is one of a desktop that provides simplicity for mouse users and lets you multitask efficiently if you get used to using keyboard shortcuts. It also lacks a lot of customization, but that was never the goal with GNOME. I'll keep playing with GNOME for some time, taking a look at default applications, some extensions, themes and the problems with them, as well as some other stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! If you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing and turning on notifications. You can also follow me on Twitter at the Linux EXP. Thank you guys for watching and goodbye!